Today marks 60 years since the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom, where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. revealed his famous I Have a Dream speech. Over the weekend, lawmakers and activists returned to our nation's capital to reflect on the progress that's been made since that day and the progress that is still to come. You take our schools, you take our economics, every aspect, we're at the bottom. But we are not going to. We're not going to stay there because another generation is rising to build upon the generations before us. Part of that starts with addressing the racial wealth gap. Research by the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis found that black families on average owned about 24 cents for every dollar owned by a white family. We're going to bring in Javier David, managing editor for business and markets at Axios and a CBS News contributor. Javier, when we talk about building a generational wealth, talk to us about how that happens. Yeah, I mean, it, building generational wealth requires ownership, and it's impossible to discuss this with uh, talking about accumulating something if you don't own it. So culturally speaking, owning housing, real estate, um, that's always been seen as a linchpin for social mobility, as has like small business ownership. Um, at one point, we were talking about crypto as a, a mode to being um, building wealth um, in the new economy. But, you know, all of that with mortgage rates at 7%, you've got real estate being as expensive as it's ever been. Crypto is no longer the big thing it was. Um, and just businesses uh, everywhere being crimped by tighter rates. You know, all of those avenues are being narrowed, if not entirely foreclosed. So how have we seen the black wealth gap improve or not improve? What have been the setbacks as we look back and, and ponder upon these last 60 years since the March on Washington? Right. I think it's important also to sort of, you know, to highlight the good news. Black unemployment um, is at or near record lows. Um, that was a milestone that we hit under President Trump. It continued under President Biden. The pandemic itself sort of unleashed this wave of small business entrepreneurship. Black women are leading the charge there. They're becoming freshly minted entrepreneurs. Um, and despite all of the discussions that we have about student loans, higher education really is one of the more reliable pathways to middle class and sort of accumulating wealth. Um, and there are large numbers of blacks enrolled in university. And the United Negro College Fund has a statistic showing how um, historically black colleges are boosters for entry into the middle class and social mobility. So those are all good things. But the bad news is, you know, class mobility is increasingly difficult to pull off and maintain. Um, data shows that blacks in, uh, in particular are more likely to sort of move up the economic ladder and then fall back. Mm -hmm. um, and you have some really sort of grim numbers about uh, the numbers of black graduating uh, college, college bound people um, sort of not going to school as in large numbers, certainly in less large numbers as white. So all of these things um, all sort of militate against one another. Uh, and you have a really sobering store, uh, some data from the Rand Corporation just in May released some statistics showing that uh, the median black household in America has about $24,000 in savings, income, home, in uh, home equity, and other elements of wealth. Uh, the median white household has around nearly 200000 So that's wow. a really disparity. That is a massive, massive gap uh, at, at this day and age. So talk to us, Javier, about what are the barriers to closing the racial wealth gap? I mean, what, what has stopped that progress? You know, we used to talk a lot about ownership. Um, the wealth gap, to, and I want to sort of be clear about something, the wealth gap isn't necessarily just a black thing. It's really a class thing, a working class issue, and it cuts across racial and social lines, but it's just a lot more apparent for a number of different reasons. Um, in the Black and African American community. Um, but something that we don't talk a lot about anymore in the political context is private ownership and this sort of irreplaceable role that it has in creating wealth. I think you, um, it was George W. Bush who sort of embraced this whole idea of an ownership society. A big thing of that was economic liberty and owning a property. I think property ownership um, is a really big deal when you're talking about um, trying to get people uh, to own something, to have a stake in it, to sort of build wealth, to create the wealth. Um, private ownership is really the best way to do that. You can't allocate that either by force or by, you know, some sort of a government program. It really does have a lot to do um, with people wanting and achieving to get at these sorts of things that traditionally have been help you move up the ladder economically. 
Javier David, thank you. Absolutely, thank you.